Welcome back, hope you're doing well. Andy here from Drive Steady, and in this video I'm reviewing the brand new Mercedes-Benz S580 4Matic. So listen up, every time a S-Class is revealed, it's like a brand new chapter of luxury and innovation is started. For the 2021 model year, the S-Class is all new and better than ever. Everything is turned up a couple notches as cars continue to evolve towards technology. And this new S-Class is the benchmark for luxury sedans moving forward. So you're probably asking yourself, what's new with this generation? What's it like? How does it drive? Well, we're going to try and answer that in this review of the Mercedes-Benz S580. All right, so let's start the review off by talking about the exterior design of this new generation of the S-Class. And the first thing you're gonna notice when you see it is that it's a much cleaner, simpler, more elegant looking design than the prior generation. Something new for this one is that it's offered in a long wheelbase. And considering that these S-Classes are commonly used as limousines for chauffeur driving, it certainly makes a lot of sense. As far as the size of this car, the length. This car is only a couple inches shorter than a Cadillac Escalade, the new one. So this is a rather long car. So it's going to be interesting to see what BMW does with the 7 Series when that comes out. But overall, this design is very understated. That's probably the best way I can put it. But it's a nice looking design in my opinion. Now, as far as the packages goes, this is the S580 trim level. So you have three different packages you can choose from. The luxury, which is the base, which is not base whatsoever. And then you have the AMG trim, which gives you additional wheels and bumpers, as I'll detail here in a second. And then you have the executive package, which is trimmed more towards the back seat uh, passenger. It adds screens and different massaging seats in the back. So Mercedes gives you options within the trim level to customize it to your use case. All right, so now let's jump into a little bit more of the details on the exterior design of this S-Class, starting off with the hallmark Mercedes-Benz TriStar uh, logo up here. And this is such a callback to nostalgia. Only higher-end Mercedes cars get this nowadays. And of course, people are always afraid of uh, these being stolen off. But when you see it, it calls back to when I was much younger and I would see these things more prevalent across even the lower-end versions of Mercedes cars. But if you're, just a quick history lesson, the reason why it's three stars, it's uh, Daimler's engines on land, sea, and air three-pointed star. Uh, so right underneath that, you still have the traditional Mercedes-Benz logo. And just in general, this front end, this being the luxury package car, you're going to get a lot more chrome up here. You can see that there's chrome finishings around the grill and on the lower portion of the bumper. If you want these blacked out, you can get the AMG package and add on an additional $400 night package, which gives you a little bit more aggressiveness in the bumper and that black uh, trimming that I was just talking about. But in general, the front end bumper in the luxury package and the AMG package look very similar in shape. It's just that black trimming and uh, a little bit more aggression in the AMG package they have to dial in because of course, it's the AMG package. All right, as far as the headlight design goes, this is an all LED headlight. As a matter of fact, 
all of the exterior lights on this S580 are LED. You do not have any regular lights. As far as the design goes, you have the running lamp that runs across the top, and then you have the three dots, which signifies the S-Class. You only get the three dotted headlight in the S-Class. So now I'll take you around to the side of the car, and I'll show you some really cool and sophisticated stuff that's happening there. All right, so when you think of an S-Class, what do you think? Smooth ride, magic carpet, luxury. So let's talk a little bit about the suspension in this car and how sophisticated it is. So starting off with uh, something I had seen before in any other regular car is rear axle steering. So rear axle steering is commonly left uh, or what I've seen them in you know, are sports cars because it makes the handling so much better on performance oriented cars. But given that this S-Class has such a long wheelbase and the turning radius is difficult to get in and out of parking spots or narrow spaces, rear axle steering comes in handy uh, very much much so on cars of this size. So what happens is when you turn the front wheels, the rear wheels also turn in the opposite direction, giving you more degree of uh, turning radius. Unfortunately, it's not available in the luxury uh, package, so this car obviously doesn't have it. In the AMG trim and the executive trim, you can get up to 10 degrees of uh, turning radius from the rear axle if you option it in the executive trim level. All right, so that magic carpet style ride, how do you attain that in a car like this? Well, you give it standard adaptive shocks and a standard air ride suspension, which has a level of sophistication that I had never seen before. How sophisticated, you ask? Well, this thing has five multi-core processors and 20 sensors that can adapt and read the uh, feedback from the road once every 1,000 seconds. Yes, so this thing contributes to that magic carpet ride that you're so used to. And as far as self-leveling, this has the self-leveling uh, ability as well. So in the comfort mode, when you're going at speeds above 70 miles an hour, this thing will automatically lower itself. And if you're going 99 miles an hour or more, it will lower itself even further. And this gives you that driving stability at high speeds that you're looking for. And then as far as the driving characteristics, how does it feel? I'll demonstrate that later on in the driving portion of the review. So now moving on to the wheels, these are the base wheels. You can get three different levels or three different options, 19, 20, or 21 inches. In the base level, this luxury trim, you could only get 19 or 20. If you wanted the largest wheels, you have to step up to the AMG or the executive package. But uh, these standard 19 inch wheels are actually pretty attractive, they're silver finish, they have the Mercedes logo there, and you have a silver brake caliper with ventilated uh, rotors in the background, wrapped with a 255 tire on all four corners. These wheels are 19 by eight and a half on all four corners, but as a smaller wheel in the base package, you're gonna get more tire, which contributes to a softer or more comfortable ride. Now let me take you around back and let me show you what's going on in the trunk, the rear end design, and also give you a dose of what the exhaust sounds like. All right, so now the rear end design of the S-Class. And the first thing you'll notice when you look at it from the side and from the rear is how short it is. Compared to the rest of the car, it's not really proportionally balanced, uh, but that's just generally how S-Classes have been designed even in the past. Uh, not that it sacrifices anything, it's just something you'll notice. So now let's talk about these tail lights. These are obviously brand new, and like I said uh, in the front, these are all LED. They look extremely cool because they have like these floating LED bulbs that look so nice and unique, uh, especially at night. It looks like a floating light bulb in the middle of the night but in general, they're very cool. The shape is very elegant, very understated, just like I mentioned the nature of this design is. So now let me give you some details about the trunk. There's a uh, couple ways you can open it. There's obviously a button on the key. There's the comfort access button, and then there's the kicking motion. So if you kick it, 
After a couple of beeps, it will open up automatically and you're exposed to a pretty decent amount of space. I would say you can fit two larger pieces of luggage in here and an additional duffel bag or maybe even a medium size. So going on long road trips or carrying uh, your things around should not be a problem. There's also a pass through in the middle section where your uh, armrest would be into the cabin of the vehicle. All right, a couple interesting things about the trunk. There's a grocery hanger that looks pretty Pretty interesting uh, it's got a little flap here that uh, allows you to pull it down and then you have a second level underneath the floor compartment of the trunk that uh, gives you a little bit more space to put your stuff as far as closing the trunk goes it's a electronic operation there are two buttons the first one here on the left you push that it will automatically close the trunk for you uh, the second one here on the right you push that it will also close the trunk but at the same time it will lock the door it will lock the car for you so you push that you walk away you don't have to take the keys out of your pocket so it's a nice convenience feature so let's round off the rear end by talking about this lower portion of the bumper. Very simple, you have parking sensors and some chrome strips here around the exhaust. The exhaust is a dual exit and uh, with a silver chrome style pipes. And of course, this has a V8 engine, but you're not really buying this car for the sound or for the performance. But regardless, it's a V8, so let's take a listen to what it sounds like. All right, so now that you had a chance to hear the exhaust, let's go ahead and talk about the engine details. But one thing really quickly, interesting thing about this hood, you look at it and you say, okay, so it's raised and it's just a regular hood, right? Well, in Mercedes cars, there's an additional layer or an interesting fact here. There's a button here that you can push and raise the hood to this orientation and this is if you want to work on your Mercedes believe it or not I'm sure the Mercedes technicians actually appreciate this more than the average consumer of this car but nonetheless it's always interesting and a fun fact about Mercedes hoods now the engines so there's a lower trim level in the S class and that is the S500 that comes with a six cylinder engine but obviously in this uh, S580 you have a V8 this is a four liter twin turbocharged engine making 496 horsepower and 516 pounds-feet of torque this does have a mild hybrid setup it's powered by a 48 volt battery that uh, produces 21 horsepower and 184 pounds-feet of torque so that number I just gave you is a combined value with the combustion gas combustion engine and that mild hybrid setup as far as the drivetrain and the chassis go this is a nine-speed automatic uh, transmission no, nothing fancy like a double clutch traditional standard nine-speed automatic transmission uh, and the chassis this is a four-wheel drive car only now formatic you cannot get a rear wheel drive s-class anymore and that gives to the stability of the car and then the weight 4,800 about 4,850 pounds so it is a big car it is going to be heavy with the v8 engine as well making it even heavier so that weight gives it the stability and the quality feel that you're expecting from a car with this price range and of this class next as far as performance goes not that performance is the selling point of this car 0 to 60 in 4.4 seconds given that this is such a big and heavy car 4.4 seconds it's pretty good that was sports car levels maybe about 10 or 15 years ago but if you're looking for something with a little bit more grunt this v8 is actually really nice it's very smooth as i'll demonstrate later in the driving portion of the review so that's pretty much the engine. Now let's go ahead and jump inside and let me show you all of the cool technology that's going on in there. All right, so now the interior portion of the review for the S580. And I must say that this is an extremely elegant, clean, high quality interior, nicely laid out, the dash and the screens, everything works well together. You also have wood on the steering wheel, which I'll talk about here in a second. 
But uh, before I jump into the interior, how do you get inside? So an interesting thing about the new S-Class is it does not have exposed door handles. They're actually flush with the car. And as you walk up to it, uh, they pop out and you pull them open. They're electronically controlled, so you don't, have a, you don't have to use a lot of force. Pull them open and then when you walk away, they just close and remain flush with the body of the car. It gives it a nice clean looking side profile. But once you're inside, man, let me tell you uh, some of the details uh, when you're in here. Starting off with this seat. So this is a immensely comfortable seat. Uh, the leather on here is extremely soft. Napa leather on the entire seat and on most of the interior as well. There is a diamond stitch pattern. You get this in uh, as standard on the S-Class. You have the ability to upgrade to a higher level of leather, but this is actually more than adequate. Very, very nice uh, quality on the seat. Adjustability. There's 12 ways you can adjust this seat. Uh, side bolstering, lumbar, shoulder, all the other normal movements that you would expect. And in addition to that, uh, the way you adjust them is actually very interesting. There's two ways. Obviously, there's one on the door panel. This is the more traditional uh, approach. But even this is uh, different because this, the adjustments are fixed in place. They're touch sensitive, so they don't actually move when you're moving the seat. And then you come over into the infotainment screen. This is obviously where it gets a little bit more advanced. You have uh, the exact ability to fine tailor the way you want the seat to be in. So for example, the, you have the ability to adjust the side bolster. So there's 10 levels. So level one, level two, as you move up, you slide your finger up and you can feel the bolsters clamping down down on the side of you and then when you let them go they actually flow very easily and they almost like kind of very elegantly I guess uh, for the lack of a better term this is also a heated and cool seat but overall on a level of comfort from one to five I would say this is a four and a half very very comfortable seat now what am i sitting at or looking at in front of me this wonderful circular steering wheel which uh, very interestingly has a uh, wooden inlay very very cool uh, this gives it that luxury feel that you're really looking for in a car in this class or in this segment uh, but you have the option of getting a Napa, uh, a full Napa leather steering wheel uh, so if you don't like the wooden inlay you have the option to do that as well. You have paddle shifters. And then the way the steering wheel works is uh, the multi-control buttons here, they're all touch sensitive. There are no physical buttons here. Everything is kind of haptic uh, feedback. And the buttons over here on the right kind of control the infotainment screen. So think the buttons on the right here closer to the center section, they control the screen over here on the right. And you have the ability to raise and lower the volume and control the infotainment screen right here from the steering wheel, which is always great. And then over here on the right, you have the ability to modify more of the gauge cluster. So uh, move through the information in here, talk I'll go through the gauges and all that stuff, obviously the cruise control, but it gives you a lot of control just from the steering wheel and the steering wheel is a great size and that wooden inlay just makes it even cooler to grab onto. So let me jump into the screen in front of you that acts as a gauge cluster. So this is very crisp. It's a 12.4 inch screen, nice graphics, high level of customization and a lot of features. So there are four different looks of the display. You have classic, you have exclusive, sport and understated and each one of these has have their own level of feel and dynamics it's supposed to uh, present to the driver or make you feel and then you even have the ability to just go full-on navigation and this gives you where you are and then it displays the speed in a smaller portion of the screen but overall high customization very easy to read you can get everything here in the center portion of the screen and on top of that you have uh, the ability to option in head-up display which has augmented reality this is something that I've never seen before but it is a very cool feature that basically displays your driving directions. For example, if you're uh, coming up to a stoplight and you have the navigation set, it wants you to make a left, it will show you using arrows that it wants you to make a left. So it makes it so much clearer and easier to understand. You don't have to take your eyes off the road, look down at a screen, look down at any screen, even your gauge cluster. It just shows you everything out in front of you. 
that's pretty much the driver portion. Let's move on into the infotainment area and more of the rest of the interior. All right, so now the rest of the interior. So there's a dash cam built into this car as standard that allows you to record uh, when you're driving. And also it will record if somebody's about to hit your car, it'll automatically turn on and record so you can get glimpses of that uh, prior to it or as it's happening. Uh, so all you got to do is provide a storage device like an SD card and whatnot, and it will record for you using that dash cam. Next, you have a panoramic roof here or panorama roof. Uh, or sunroof so you have the ability to open this uh, frontal section here but the rear section only has a shade where you can open for the back seat but the way you open is actually interesting there's no physical button it's all a swipe motion so you swipe and it closes right here I can see the shade closing you can see up there and then when I s let it close real quickly and then when I swipe backwards it will open up so it's all a swiping motion there is no traditional button so it's just something interesting that I've never seen before getting rid of more buttons up here so now let's come down to the center section and this wonderful infotainment screen so physically this is a 12.8 inch screen it's not a wide screen like it was before in the prior generation it's a more of a tablet style layout and it is a OLED screen, which means it's not backlit. It's much, much crisper, individual lights, very, very nice, clear, easy screen to look at. Obviously, touch screen. There is no more uh, touchpad controller. Everything is used using your voice, uh, using the Hey Mercedes command, or you can use obviously your fingerprint so it's a very intuitive uh, communication with driver or or um, a passenger driver and the screen itself now what about the software this is the latest version of MBUX I believe it's 2.0 and the uh, much like the earlier version that I drove in the CLA 45 uh, this is actually uh, even better I thought the previous version was easy to use this is even easier to use at least in my opinion everything is laid out widget style smartphone style laid out you have apps comfort settings navigation everything is just easy to use you just click on it and you go into the menus they're easy to read uh, it's just well laid out it's a very snappy system according to Mercedes this screen or this unit along with the software is 50% faster than the prior generation it does have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay built in this is a very sophisticated system as well you have the ability to uh, change it up to 27 different languages are uh, interpreted by this system uh, stock I noticed there's maybe a handful but you have the ability to download them uh, through the over-the-air updates that Mercedes now offers in the S-Class. You don't have to take your car into the dealership to get the updates, the software updates that uh, many manufacturers release through the product lifecycle. Everything just happens over the air, much like Tesla is doing or started doing when they first came out. But again, overall, this is a very, very nice uh, infotainment screen. It's a great size. The touch screen is very responsive. The graphics, everything, the learning curve is very low. Uh, I got used to it very, very quickly. So uh, thumbs up for the infotainment screen. Now staying within the infotainment screen, but talking uh, something where you don't really see an infotainment screens, it's the climate controls. It's built into the bottom portion of the screen and it's always there it's fixed in place you have the ability to um, turn on the vents and the AC raise and lower do all of the things that you're used to and if you want uh, further adjustability there's a climate menu you click that and you have further adjustments uh, to tailor exactly what you want where you want the air to blow uh, and the fan speed and all that stuff so it's nice to have a fixed a climate control system even though it's integrated into the screen sometimes they just go away and there you got to click through menus to find them but not in this s class everything is nicely laid out hence why i think it's very intuitive and easy to use now underneath the screen you have a row of buttons 
So starting from the left to the right, you have the dynamic uh, control selector. So these are your drive modes, comfort, sport, sport plus, individual, all these wonderful things. And then you have the camera system, which is fantastic in this car. There are multiple levels of adjustability. You can do the front, you can look at the rear, the 360 camera. So it's got a very nice resolution, very crisp, very easy to, very easy to read, and obviously enhances the safety uh, features of this car car another interesting thing is there's a fingerprint sensor right here in between the hazard and the on and off button for the infotainment or the switch for the infotainment so you just hold your finger on this and you can configure several different driver profiles that uses this biometric fingerprint reader so you just come in here you put your finger on here and it will automatically detect oh Andy's in here so now I need to change it to Andy's driving profile so this is crazy stuff going on in here with this level of customization and technology being built in and being able to switch driver modes using your finger without having to push any buttons is actually very, very impressive. Now let's come down to the, uh, the center section here. Uh, what I mentioned earlier, there is no more track pad like you saw in other Mercedes cars. That's completely gone away. The transmission selector is up here on the column. So it's a stock style shifter, which I'm very uh, hot and cold about. Sometimes I like it because it declutters the center section, but sometimes it's just very weird. You're so used to kind of just doing this motion down here in the center section. And this is kind of funny. You're just like, oh, where is it? Oh, it's right here. So back to the center section. So when you close it, it looks very nice and clean. It's got a piano black plastic, which is smeared completely with fingerprints, but nonetheless, it looks pretty clean and nice and flows in nicely with the infotainment screen. So you open it and you have two cup holders. You have two USB type C uh, style outlets. You have a wireless charging uh, pad. And then we come to this uh, center armrest section. There's a button, you open this and you're greeted with a pretty deep uh, storage area. You have two more USB outlets here, but otherwise pretty standard fare. Uh, this center arm section is actually really nice, very cushiony. I like it a lot. Now, that's pretty much the front area of the Mercedes-Benz S580. Now let me show you the rear and uh, what it's like back there. All right, so now the back seats, which could be argued as a little bit more important than the front seats. And uh, they are extremely comfortable, much like the front seats are, I'm glad to say. Uh, I had driven, what was it, the Ford Mustang Mach-E, and the front seats were more comfortable than the back seats. But uh, I'm glad to say that's not the case for the S580 because these back seats are great so let me give you some details back here remember earlier on in the video i had mentioned that you can get an executive package and that gives you a lot more tailoring back here it adds screens it adds a little bit more controls and uh, you have like a tablet style things and all this uh, stuff that's more rear passenger oriented but this one doesn't have it but that's not to say that this back doesn't have an infinite level of comfort and also adjustability so as an example right here on the door panel i have the ability to raise and close both windows if i wanted to then there are shades all around me there's window shades there's the panoramic roof shade and then there's the shade behind me in the rear view glass i can raise and lower all of that using these buttons here so i have a lot of uh, customization or ability to shade things all from uh, this passenger seat or the other. You can do it on both sides. And as far as legroom goes, you can see this is a long wheelbase car and I have a lot, a lot, infinite amount. I could stretch my legs in here comfortably without having to worry about anything. Uh, or And the front passenger, I'm sitting behind myself. Uh, so there's plenty, plenty of leg room here. As far as shoulder room, it is very comfortable. This is a two person car. You can probably fit three people in here, not of my size, maybe two people my size and a sm much smaller, maybe a child. Three children will fit back here. Uh, but uh, in general, this is a single person chauffeured car or two people back here. Uh, that's where your highest level of comfort is going to be. As far as other amenities, you have uh, a center area here that has two more USB type C type uh, outlets and a standard 
uh, what looks like here a 115 volt uh, kind of plug-in outlet uh, maybe if you buy your charging device you can charge it in here and uh, maybe that's an idea uh, because not many, many phones have transitioned over into a USB type-c outlet so that's actually pretty clever and then you have the air conditioning vents here in the center you have them here on the door panel as well so you have a nice uh, directional airflow from all angles uh, obviously you have a center arm section here which has a storage area that lifts up provides a decent amount of uh, storage room and then as i mentioned earlier there is a pass through in the trunk just in case you want to throw something back there really quickly from back here center padding area and then uh, the uh, cup holders actually have a uh, two level approach so you click on it once and it exposes this slim area which uh, from my understanding is for much thinner things obviously your phone uh, it doesn't really stand in here phones in here are pretty thick and then you push on it again and out comes the two cup holders so it's a pretty interesting design so let's fold this up and finally you have the uh, roof up here which you cannot open but it's nice to be able to see out of for the back passengers so overall this is a really really nice back seat very comfortable enough amenities even in the base level for a nice level of comfort if you wanted the rear massaging seats you could uh, option them in but again this is a really nice back seat and with that let's transition now to the driving portion of the review all right so now the driving portion of the review and as always the key so this is a brand new key from mercedes they've changed the look of their key and i gotta say i'm quite impressed with it it does have a good weight to it the metal uh, on this side is a metal piece all around it is a metal piece the back is a, a black plastic but honestly i don't mind it for a car of this price range i think it's pretty adequate uh, i don't know if you could ask for much more maybe an all metal uh, key but that's the key all right so as far as uh, the seating position and the visibility it's actually very good out front even though this is a big car with a big hood it kind of wraps around you it kind of shrinks around you and i see out in front of me very very clearly out the sides no issues i have all of the safety features that you would want in this car blind top monitoring uh, active cruise control front and rear parking sensors the camera system that i showed you it's literally you can't the the list of safety features in this car is so long it would take an entirely separate video just to demonstrate and talk about all the safety features in this s580 but as far as price goes the base price of the s580 is 116,000 uh in the luxury trim like this one which is the base one uh and then you uh, add some options and things like that you can easily get this over 120,000 and then the amg pack adds about five thousand dollars and then the executive line adds a significant amount of money that one is about 126 almost 130,000 dollars this car as configured i would say it's about 120 121 22 thousand dollars it's it doesn't have all of the fixings but it's uh well equipped even in the base level trim this car has uh, a lot of uh, standard equipment so let's go ahead and turn the engine on start stop button up here on the dash and it's a very quiet startup uh, not a lot of drama you don't get exhaust noise obviously so let's go ahead and put our seat belt on and let me show you what this s class is like to drive so as i said the seat is very very comfortable and as you take off you get like this flowing type of feel when you're driving it's just if you've never driven a a big body luxury car before when you experience it for the first time it feels like <laughs> I don't know if uh, maybe I can I'll describe it to you in in a sound but that's kind of how it feels so since we're driving uh, the v8 version let me go ahead and get this out of the way really quickly so I'm going to go in sport plus mode I've got uh, a decent stretch of road in front of me so let's see how this thing goes pretty good pretty good actually it feels faster than advertised that 4.4 seconds 
Uh, I don't know if it's the momentum of the car because this is such a big car and then the momentum once it swings the weight to the back of the car and you're really moving. Uh, this thing moves, it's not slow whatsoever. So let's see again. Yeah, there you go. It's really nice. The brake pedal is very squishy, uh, but yeah, it's, it's quick. It's more than quick enough for daily use and more than enough down low power to get you moving uh, in day-to-day -day driving situations like merging onto a freeway, etc., uh, etc. Et so uh, the speed is good, adequate. You're getting uh, a nice balanced speed for what, you, what you're paying for, $115,000. This shouldn't be a slow car, and by all means, it's not a slow car. So let's go ahead and put this back into comfort mode which is, in my opinion, the best mode for this car. <laughs> it is truly remarkable how comfortable this car is. So let's get out on the road and immediately you can notice a difference. The throttle response becomes so much more smooth. I think that's a really nice word for this car is smooth. That should be its nickname. It's the Mercedes-Benz S550 Smooth Formatic. It is so smooth in all of its inputs and feedback it's truly remarkable the amount of of tuning that mercedes-benz has put into this car as far as to make it as smooth as possible so one uh, way i can demonstrate this or uh, express this is with the brake pedal this is probably the smoothest brake pedal I have felt in any car I've driven. And my most relatable experience to a car like this is the current generation of the 7 Series. I drove that for quite a period of time. And this car actually blows that car out of the water in every sense. Um, but that brake pedal feel, it's so smooth to engage and disengage. I know I'm talking about the brake pedal here. But if, if you have the chance to drive this car, this the smoothness of the brake pedal is absolutely remarkable. And when you tune, uh, actually when you tie that into the automatic start-stop, if that's something that uh, you have enabled, this is also one of the smoothest engagements of automatic start-stop that I have ever encountered. So with the brake pedal and uh, the start and stop engaged, I'm coming to a stop here and the brake pedal already is very very smooth the engagement is good and then when I come to a stop here the engine shuts off and it's almost like I'm rolling to a stop and then uh, it's just so smooth the engagement and the brake pedal feel in this S-Class. Now as I'm sitting here in traffic I can say that the seat is just unbelievably comfortable you feel like you're extremely just separated from the environment outside. The noise cancellation and the quietness, for the lack of a better term, is remarkable, exquisite, uh, unbelievable in this car. Uh, prior to filming this part, I was driving around and I came to a stop and I just didn't make any noise. I didn't move, I didn't talk, uh, and it was remarkable how quiet it is in here. So if you're looking for something that's isolated from outside, this is truly remarkable uh, how well uh, it's insulated in here. So now I'm going to uh, merge onto the highway here and I'm gonna demonstrate the uh, more daily drivability. On ramp ahead. ahead, okay, yes, I know. Um, so uh, demonstrate some of the uh, daily drivability features and I'm about to go on to the 405 and if you're somebody who lives in California or in Los Angeles you know that the 405 is always filled with traffic and I bet you there will be traffic uh, uh, on it today but uh, and just, just to demonstrate how pleasant of a car this is on a day-to-day -day basis the smoothness is just unquestionable there's no doubt about that but some of the other features <clears throat> Starting off with the infotainment. The infotainment screen with this LED uh, display is 
really, really nice, very crisp, easy to use on a day-to-day -day basis. Everything is just laid out out in front of you. Uh, the shortcut keys are perfect. The climate control is fixed. You don't have to worry about it. The gauges are super clear. It's, I, it's, it's really, really nice. It's hard to find a fault in this car. You really have to be nitpicking in order to be complaining about this car. So one of the things I always like to test out, I'm about to merge onto the freeway here, is the uh, self-driving or the radar cruise control that this car has. And it also has uh, self-driving capabilities. So I'm gonna merge on, let me give it some gas. Yeah, more than enough power to get onto the highway. So I'm gonna get on here. I'm going to enable my uh, self-driving feature and it's very easy to turn on. You just, uh, it's set to ready. So on, off, turn it on, set the speed, 28 miles an hour and let go and let it do its thing. That's it. I just pushed two buttons and it just started doing its thing. I don't have to worry about it whatsoever. It just maintains the speed. If I want it to go a little bit faster, Oh, it's reminding me to put my hands on the wheel. So it's just, I just set it and it goes. I don't have to worry about it whatsoever. And uh, it's a very nice, nicely tuned system. It steers for you whenever you need it to. And it's tuned right. It doesn't make too many abrupt movements. The brake pedal and the gas and all that is tuned just right. And uh, the interesting thing about it is it still does require you to pay attention, put your hands on the wheel and let it know that you're still here. And if you don't do that, uh, keep this in mind, if you don't put your hands on the wheel, it will automatically come to a stop. It will detect that it's in a safe environment to do so. It will come to a stop, a complete stop, if you don't put your hands on the wheel and it will turn its hazard lights on until you wake up, maybe you've fallen asleep and you re-engage it. So uh, it's a quite a clever and sophisticated auto on off, uh, I guess, radar control system uh, with cruise control. But overall, I'm extremely, extremely impressed with this S580. Uh, it's very hard to find fault and some people have been complaining about the way it looks. This car is more than the way it looks. Even though it's a little understated, people want a little bit more flash and pizzazz in their expensive car. This car is more than just looks. This is an absolutely amazing, amazing car, amazing daily driver, extremely well-rounded and yeah i don't know what else to say other than i'm extremely extremely impressed with this car and granted its price it's good it's not a letdown uh, i would be extremely interested to see how bmw responds to this now that this is out but in general if you have any questions that i did not answer please feel free to leave me a comment down below or send me a direct message on instagram at drive steady but thank you for watching this video until next time drive steady